One more time, keep it straight and watch those yard lines. Then do it again. That's how the 1998 marching season began for the Henry Clay Band. It was a heavy dose of marching fundamentals, not the most popular activity of summer band camp. But this is the way it has to be. While everyone was chomping at the bit to learn the new show, director Teresa Elliott had to make sure her band students knew how to march with precision, even in their sleep. See how much adjustment you have to make after eight counts. Just eight counts, look what you did. So you need to take a little larger step and you need to take a little, little smaller, but you still just have to cover and grasp the line from the folks in front of you. The next step toward learning the show was learning the drill, a process that was the ultimate test of patience four, for the five, students six, and directors now alike. For the freshmen, it wasn't just a test of patience, it was a test of mental and physical endurance. What's the toughest part about being a freshman? Um, I think getting into the swing of things because you're just new at it and there's so much to learn. Well, you're just keeping up with all the older people, you know, it's, it's like they are just so good. You know, coming out of middle school, it's just, it's really hard to keep up with everybody here. For junior Erica Roosh, marching band is quite a challenge. You see, she is hearing impaired. But with the help of a sign language specialist, the disability doesn't stop her from doing something that she loves. Deaf people think they think they can't. They think negative a lot of times, but but we should learn basic things and and learn how to be meet each challenge. One of the secrets to surviving band camp is knowing how to take full advantage of the breaks. I went all over me. It's so good though. Hey, she said, they said take a drink, not a shower. <laughs> it's like, when you hunt, it's hard. This is called a camel pack. It's my portable water break, okay? You pull it out of the backpack like so. I broke the cap so I had to put this little thing on it. And you suck like this, and water comes out this little pouch back here. Now, the reason GJ has one of these is because when he gets in trouble and can't go get water, he can still yeah. have some refreshment. Uh, okay. Formation 11. That's a big parallelogram. After enough drill was learned, it was time to put it with the music. This year, Henry Clay is doing the music of Jan van der Roost, and basically our show this year is a series of dances, and uh, we have a, an Olympic fanfare type of opener, and our second tune is very ethnic, and uh, the third number is a slow chorale called Canterbury Chorale, which most of the kids knew uh, from having played it in District Festival last year. And then, of course, to incorporate our percussion, we have a Brazilian samba piece, and then we're closing the show with a piece called Slavia. So it's a five-work show, and uh, the kids seem to really enjoy it, and I think it's going to be really successful this year. After a long, hot day of band camp, a pool party was a welcome relief. But bright and early the next morning, another day of band camp began, and the first item on the daily schedule was an aerobic workout. <laughs> then it was back out to the practice field. All in all, it was an excellent band camp. Oh, band camp has been amazing so far. Um, the only word to describe has been outstanding. Um, everybody has worked hard. Um, I think everybody this year wants to do the best they can. And what did the seniors think about their last band camp? I'm a little sad. I, uh, I've enjoyed so much. I didn't expect, when I came, came as a freshman, I didn't expect that I would have this much fun. And uh, all the people here mean a whole lot to me. This is your last band camp. Mixed feelings? Um, yeah, I have really mixed feelings. I've, you know, I'm kind of looking back on past band camps and how this one's going. This one is a lot uh, more above the other ones at the
the level that we're playing at and that we're marching at and that we're working at. We're just really advanced for this early in the season. At the end of band camp, the band boosters fired up the grills for the annual picnic. In some ways, the parents were just as excited about the upcoming marching season as the kids were. The moms and dads were anxious to see the new show, and the band was just as anxious to show it to them. The Henry Clay Band was well on its way to yet another successful season. Going back to school after summer vacation is always a tough transition, but Friday Night Football gave the students a chance to unwind and have some fun. Henry Clay's first contest was the bluegrass pageant of bands over at Bryan Station High School. Watching a marching band arrive at a contest site is sort of like watching a military operation. You have the troops unloading into a staging area as they prepare to go into battle, and you have all of the equipment and hardware that must be unloaded and set up. That's where the parents come into play. There are literally hundreds of items that have to be accounted for. Meanwhile, the kids were starting to loosen up. How's that feel? Good. <laughs> it's always a lot of fun watching the freshmen get ready for their first contest, especially when they put on their uniforms. <laughs> what seems to be the problem here? He just can't get it, you know, fastened. Okay. Now we go with the, go with the top. Did you get your uniform on okay? Yeah, I got help from the um, mothers here that helped us. It looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm really nervous. Kim, this is your first contest. How do you feel about all this? Um, I'm a little bit nervous about marching and playing at the same time, but I'm sure once I get into it and just ignore the crowd and just concentrate on the music that I'll be able to do it. One of the band's biggest fans was on hand. How do you feel about this band? I know you're following the band oh, this weekend. Oh, I'm just really excited about this band. Not only just the band, but the parents that we have and the camaraderie and the fellowship. It's a, a great example for what I'd like to see all our programs to be. Well, we just completed uh, the show this week. Um, we changed the opening set this morning, so we're going to see a different thing this afternoon than we saw last night at the football game. Uh, we've come a long way since Tuesday's rehearsal, so I think the kids are really excited about putting on a really fine show here today. Justin, tell me about this contest. How do you guys feel going into this? Well, uh, we feel confident that we're going to win because we're the only 4A band and we're supposed to have confidence in ourselves. I just hope we're, we're all focused. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, beautiful, beautiful. About 45 minutes before the scheduled preliminary performance time, the band broke up into its basic sections for warm up. Soon it was showtime. Henry Clay was the last band to perform in the prelims. Even though Henry Clay was the only band in Class 4A, overall scores would determine which bands would make it to the evening finals. And Henry Clay was bound and determined to be one of those bands.
For the first time out, it was a good performance. The judges awarded Henry Clay a distinguished rating and one of the coveted spots in the evening finals. Everyone was relieved, especially the freshmen. It wasn't as tough as you thought it was gonna be, huh? No, it, it really wasn't. It, it is tough. It takes a lot of concentration, but uh, it's coming. What do you think the band has to work on for tonight? Um, first of all, just watching the forms and like in the closure, the big triangle that we make, just really concentrating on hitting that and playing. Are you hungry? Somewhat, yeah. How about getting some food? Yeah. <laughs> The band boosters set up tables piled with food and drinks, and the band members filled up their plates. What do you got there? Uh, ham, and, ham and cheese. Ham and cheese? And uh, dessert. Sweet stuff. Yeah. Get some sugar so I can get some energy. While the kids ate, director Teresa Elliott was thinking about the finals. Well, we're going to work on the tempo of the closer. I thought that pulled a little bit. We're just going to work on a little few, I mean, there's not a lot of things we can fix. We can fix a few drill problems. We can fix a few music problems, overplaying. Um, just a little bit of being hyper and letting it over overbalance. So I think that just toning it down just a little bit uh, and cleaning it up. After another round of warm-ups, the Henry Clay Band entered the field for the finals, hoping to take its show up to the next level. <laughs> In addition to winning Reserve Grand Champion, Henry Clay also won the award for Best Overall Music. It had indeed been a very successful day. The following weekend, the Henry Clay Band hosted the Central Kentucky Band Invitational. Students, parents, and directors alike all pitched in to do a wide variety of jobs. Dozens of buses carrying hundreds of band students had to be routed and parked, and each band had to be escorted to the warm-up areas and the football stadium. Parents also had to help each band move all of its equipment. In addition, with each band attracting scores of parents and supporters, ticket booths had to be manned and each spectator stamped as they entered. The concession stands were busy all day long. With a hot September sun beating down, ice-cold drinks were a popular item. Outside the concession stands, parents were flipping burgers as fast as they could. What's the secret to gourmet hamburgers? <laughs> hot, fast grill. It was a long day of hard work for everyone involved. Doing a lot of hard work? Yeah. yeah. Been running back and forth, doing everything between like concession stand, between the bake sale, running back and forth in the bathrooms, in the hospitality room. Just running there back and forth everywhere. Henry Clay performed an exhibition, and the crowd loved it. One of the highlights of the day was a special guest performance by the University of Kentucky Marching Band. The last item of business was making sure the scores were tabulated accurately and the awards and trophies presented. For the Henry Clay Band program, it was a total team effort. With a contest this size, uh, we need as many parents as possible to help us out. And I do want to thank every parent that showed up and helped. It's a large undertaking, and it's a very good fundraiser for us. Henry Clay had two full weeks to prepare for its next contest, the Blue and Gold Festival at Moorhead State University. This was a ratings-only contest with no head-to-head -head competition among the other bands. But that didn't make any difference. It was extremely important for the band to put forth its very best. After all, there were two very tough Bands of America competitions in the weeks ahead.
The judges were quite impressed and awarded distinguished ratings to the entire band, the percussion, and the auxiliary. Henry Clay's next contest was the Bands of America Cincinnati Regional at the University of Cincinnati. The kids knew getting off the buses that this was not going to be like any other contest they had ever experienced. With some of the very best bands in the region on hand, Henry Clay was facing some of the toughest competition it had ever faced. Just making the evening finals would be cause for celebration at this contest. What's going to be the key to success today for the Henry Clay band? Uh, focus, I think. If you don't have focus and uh, probably the heart to do it. If you're just doing it for, you know, just because someone's telling you to do it, then you're not going to be able to do it to your full potential, I guess. Even the littlest of Blue Devil fans had made the trip up from Lexington. The band booster set up a table full of snacks. How does a banana help your performance? Oh, it gives us energy. It's going to be a good performance, and we need some extra energy before we get out there, so eating bananas and water. As the band members put on their uniforms, they were a little more nervous than usual. They would be performing in a large stadium, and the judging was going to be tough. Bands of America warm-ups are divided up into two sections. First, there was the physical warm-up, where the band got to practice some of the basics of marching. Then there was the musical warm-up. After a short walk across campus, the band was ready to enter Nippert Stadium. A loud group of blue and gold clad parents greeted the band as it entered the field. With a concrete floor beneath the AstroTurf and a bowl-shaped stadium, the sound really echoed, especially the drums. It was an entirely new experience for the band. The judges placed Henry Clay eighth in the prelims, and the kids were thrilled to make the evening finals. But even though it was a good performance, director Teresa Elliott said it wasn't sparkling. She knew her band could do much better. We talked about it, and, and we all had specific things. And I think one of the things I said is if everybody will do one thing better tonight than what you did this afternoon will be 110 percent better and there's there's no way that we won't have a great performance at that time we weren't looking to place ex exceptionally high or win anything we were just looking forward to performing in that stadium again and having an even better show than what we did that that afternoon the strategy worked that evening at the finals henry clay entered the field with renewed confidence <laughs> It was indeed a better performance. But once again, Henry Clay placed eighth overall. Nevertheless, the kids were pleased with their first Bands of America experience. We felt so great. It was the first BOA contest we'd been to since any of us had been in, at Henry Clay. And we couldn't believe we made finals. We did not expect to make finals. It had been built up so huge. And then just to hear our name called to be performing at finals that night, we just could not believe it. We were ecstatic. And we went in, we had a good performance in finals, and on the way home, we were all just so happy. We just still couldn't believe it that we actually made finals at a BOA contest. It was such a big deal for us. Henry Clay's last marching contest was the Bands of America Regional in Johnson City, Tennessee. This was by far the longest trip of the year, and Henry Clay's first overnight trip in quite a while. So what were the kids thinking about as they boarded the chartered buses? Uh, focus on the show. That's, that's what we really need to do. Focus. That's all I'm thinking about right now. And you get to go on a really cool trip. Yeah. It's going to be neat. At 9 o'clock on a Friday morning, the procession of buses left the high school bound for the volunteer state.
After a long bus ride, the Henry Clay Band arrived at Science Hill High School in Johnson City for a mid-afternoon rehearsal. Even in these last few days of marching season, the band was pushing even harder, doing whatever it took to make the show even better. Later that evening, the band arrived at the Comfort Inn in nearby Elizabethton. The kids were anxious to check into their rooms and enjoy a weekend on the road. The next morning, Henry Clay arrived on the campus of East Tennessee State University. Once again, the band would be facing some stiff Bands of America competition. Some of the bands were former regional champs and national finalists. But Henry Clay had some Bands of America experience of its own now and was ready to meet the challenge head on. After warming up, the band headed for its 1 p.m. preliminary performance. The contest was being held inside, under the roof of the university's indoor football stadium, where the acoustics would be sort of like singing in the shower, lots of echo and reverb. Some truly dedicated parents and fans of the band had made the extra long trip down from Lexington to cheer on their favorite band, and Henry Clay did not disappoint them. It was absolutely the best performance of the season. The marching was spectacular, and the kids handled the acoustical challenges of the music pretty well also. The band left the stadium feeling good. It was an experience. We, um, there, there were parts, but it held together pretty good, and I, I think it went really well. I think it, we, we did really well. I really do. Back at the motel, the kids gobbled up pieces of pizza and rested up for a possible performance in the evening finals. They would find out later in the afternoon whether or not they had made it. In the meantime, the directors met with the band members and played videotapes of the preliminary performance, pointing out things for improvement. I think the kids were ready to perform. In fact, if anything, I think they were a little bit oversight. The group that went on right before us was uh, three times our size. We were hearing all the vibrations of them and all the, the, the sound that they were putting out. And I think uh, the problems that we had are easily fixable if we get the opportunity to do it not tonight. And that's just to tone a few people down so we don't have so many heroes uh, uh, out there on the field and, and trying to cover for everybody else. Later that afternoon, an award ceremony was held back inside the stadium, and the news was good. Henry Clay had made the finals, placing eighth. The kids were ecstatic. After a quick bite to eat, it was time to put on the uniforms one more time. Associate Director Tara Lynn Schwab was carrying what she called a lucky eyeball. I've been carrying it with me all weekend, so it's it's looking at you. Yeah, it's not scary. I guess it's a squashed penny from somewhere in Oklahoma that I found on the Science Hill parking lot. So, so, so combined uh, with the lucky eyeball yeah, and the so lucky penny. Here we go. Cheers. There. <laughs> Just before the finals performance, Ms. Elliott gave her students one last pep talk. It was an exciting moment as Henry Clay took the field.
Even though the performance wasn't as good as the prelims, Henry Clay still finished eighth overall, and when the band left the stadium, dozens of parents gave the band a well-deserved ovation. It had been a long, hard marching season, and everyone was congratulated for a job well done. The Henry Clay Band made a smooth transition into concert season. In December, the band presented its holiday concert, which began with the concert band. But the jazz combo had its own version of Jingle Bells. Next, the percussion ensemble played a medley of Christmas songs. Then the clarinet choir took the stage with its own medley of favorites. The steel band in just its second year took Christmas to the islands. And finally, the symphonic band closed the concert with a stirring rendition of King of Kings.
One of the highlights of the entire school year was the percussion ensemble and steel drum band's trip to Louisville to perform at the Kentucky Music Educators Association in-service conference. I received the letter in August and was just very, very excited. It was late August and I think I submitted the tape in May. And I was shocked, number one, because most of the groups that are selected to perform for this are high school bands, symphonic bands, and concert bands. So the fact that we were a percussion group was a unique thing in itself. Talk about a tough audience. Many of the state's music educators were on hand, as well as some of the state's best high school musicians. After opening up the program with Bacchanal Lady, the group played Trini Mambo, written by Ms. Schwab. The next selection was Me Tarzan, a creative composition to say the least. Then they played a song called Fiesta Latina. The program also included a selection called Why Not?
Henry Clay ended its performance with Bugsy Sharp's Sunset. During basketball season, the pep band rocked the house and filled the gym with school spirit. the Henry Clay Band held its annual concert camp. On Friday evening, Dr. Frederick Speck from the University of Louisville rehearsed with the concert band. On Saturday, a variety of guest soloists and ensembles performed, including the Eastern Kentucky University Faculty Brass Quintet. Then, expert clinicians worked separately with each section of the band. Later on, Richard Clary from the University of Kentucky worked with the symphonic band. The camp was a crucial step leading up to the KMEA District Concert Festival. The concert band opened its performance at UK's Singletary Center with Anthem for Winds and Percussion by Claude Smith. Next, the concert band performed Polly Oliver by Thomas Root.
The concert band closed its performance with All Glory Told by James Swearingen. It was a good performance, and the judges awarded the concert band a distinguished rating. Because of scheduling problems, the symphonic band traveled over to Moorhead State University. The festival program began with Mercury by Jan van der Roost. The next selection was Psalm for Band by Vincent Persichetti.
For the finale, Henry Clay chose Hounds of Spring by Alfred Reed. It was an excellent performance, and the judges were quite impressed. The symphonic band received a unanimous distinguished rating. Well, to tell you the truth, I had a lot of fun, and most performances, you know, you just sit down and you just play, and you're like, okay, I'm done. But that performance, I really had a lot of fun. Um, the music was great, the dynamics, and we were really into the music. The Persichetti song for band has to be one of the greatest pieces of wind literature ever written. and. Um, it, it appears to be simple at first, and then as you dive into it, there's more and more and more things to be, be done with it. Henry Clay's next concert was the Jazz and Percussion Extravaganza, which began with the drumline performing Short Circuits. <laughs> Combo featuring both students and directors performed a song called Kinda Hip. One of the selections performed by the jazz ensemble was Uptown Stomp. Steel Band B played a tune called Jump in the Line.
The jazz combo performed several songs, including Swing Fever. The percussion ensemble took the stage to play On the Horizon. Then Steel Band A performed Fiesta Latina. <laughs> Former band member Jason Fisher was featured as a guest artist on a tribute to Chuck Mangione. It was a fun night filled with fun music, and the crowd loved every minute of it. It takes tens of thousands of dollars to support a dynamic band program such as Henry Clay's, and car washes were among the many fundraisers the band boosters sponsored throughout the year. <laughs> you just made a mess. Yeah, I'm working. Henry Clay's last concert of the year was the Pops concert held in the high school gym. This concert has long been a band tradition, and part of that tradition is the decorating of the tables. After the tables are decorated, they're filled with food and beverages. Of course, this kind of dining experience needs a little music, and that's where the band comes into play. This event featured nearly all of Henry Clay's instrumental ensembles, all in one concert. Up first was the jazz ensemble, playing jump, jive, and whale. Combined concert and symphonic bands played Friends for Life, 
dedicated to the 1999 senior class. One of the highlights of the concert was student teacher Scott Bersaya and Miss Schwab's performance as they went head to head on dueling xylophones. The steel band played a few tunes. And the drumline performed a song called Sambalero. Student teacher Scott Bersaya grabbed a baton to lead the symphonic band through a rousing rendition of A Closer Walk With Thee. The symphonic band had no problem handling the challenging march, Rolling Thunder. Next, the percussion ensemble played Putting Out the Cat. Then the jazz ensemble ended the concert with Blue Rondo a la Turk.
with the signature blue back piece. We're going to retitle it Blue and Gold Rondo. At the end of May, the Henry Clay Band held its annual band banquet. Just nine months ago, this very room was echoing with the sounds of band camp aerobics. Now it was the scene of the seniors' final farewell. They knew this day would come, and they tried to prepare for it. But it was still an emotional moment as each senior was introduced and honored for all the years of their dedicated service. The U.S. Marine Corps Semper Fidelis Award for Diligence, Dedication, and Musical Excellence was given to Meredith Moore. The Director's Award for Superior Leadership, Cooperation, and Achievement was presented to Katie Malden. The Louis Armstrong Award for Achievement and Creativity in the Field of Jazz was given to Jed Leach. And the prestigious John Philip Sousa Band Award for Overall Outstanding Achievement in Instrumental Music was presented to Lindsey Barnhill. Then, one by one, the seniors walked up to the podium, trying to put into words how they felt about the band they had grown to love. After they were done, there wasn't a dry eye in the room. It was so hard to say goodbye. I know I'm going to miss the Henry Clay Band so much. We, I, I'm just going to miss all my friends. We all love each other so much. We have such a support system. We all support each other. We're supported by the directors, by the parents, by everybody else's parents. And I'm really going to miss that support system. I've just got a lot of memories attached to this band, but most of it's through the music that we've played together. When you play with people like this, then there's a lot of bonding that you go through to put all your emotion into our pieces of music. And um, I'm going to miss that and all the people, wonderful people I've met through this organization. Oh, words can't describe how much I'm going to miss it. Um, the people, the music, most especially, and. Uh, just the whole high school experience, I've enjoyed a whole lot. I won't miss going to the contest. I mean, a lot of fun in bus and just hanging around with friends in band and just being around here. These four years, it's been a whole lot. I've done a lot with the band. I've met a lot of people. I mean, I've met my best friends through this program, not to mention Miss Elliott. I've gotten real close to her, and she's done everything for me. And, I mean, I'll miss all that, miss the friendships, miss the bonding during the trip. I mean, I know everyone says they're going to miss your friends, and, you know, that, that's, that's so true because you spend so many hours with the peop these same people every day, and you, you have no choice but to come close. And um, I, my best friends are in the senior class, and, you know, we're going to miss each other terribly. My favorite part about being in band was the beautiful friendships we made, the wonderful music that we played. Um, I'm just going to miss all the director's dedication, and I just wish the seniors the best of luck next year.